graphene oxide, what it is, is if you imagine a sheet of graphene or graphite, a piece of graphite, your pencil, and the individual sheets that would come off would be graphene. If one were to take one of those individual sheets and put oxygen groups all over the basal planes and at the edges, that is what graphene oxide is. So it's an oxidized form of graphene, graphene being individual sheet form of the bulk graphite, which we're quite familiar with from pencil lead. A man named Hummers came up with this procedure that's called Hummers procedure and it was published in the late 50s. And that is the procedure that is still used today by most laboratories. What we've done is we've been able to improve upon that procedure by making a small modification. We added uh, more potassium permanganate to the reaction mixture and we used a mixture of sulfuric acid, which Hummers had used, but we added phosphoric acid to it. So we used a mixture of, of sulfuric and phosphoric, and we left out the sodium nitrate, which he used. One of the exciting things about these processes is that you can do it using one, one pot reaction. It's just one-time reaction, something that can be used in industry, something that you can do in your lab, something that can be done by anyone. And if you look at the, the yield comparison, if we look at the classical Hummer's method and compare it to our method, we get about uh, three to four times the yield that Hummer's had gotten. So that's quite substantial. So Hummer's had a lot of material that ended up not to become very oxidized. But we can get three or four times the yield. And this makes it now really quite attractive from an industrial perspective because the overall yield is probably over 90% now for our procedure. If you can see this, this is how mater our material looks when it's dissolved in water. So it's a kind of dark brown solution. And it's a stable. And you can, the graphene oxide can be suspended for hours. It's not going to uh, settle down really quick. And if you see our material is brown, it's not black anymore. And also you can see it's a kind of like powder consistency, a different of the flakes that you can see from the leftover of the graphite um, oxidation process. I think the paper is certainly more popular than I had expected. I knew that graphene oxide was important. I did not know that this would want to be one of the 20 most downloaded papers of the year for ACS Nano. But it's interesting that more recently I've gotten feedback. For example, I was speaking to somebody recently at the National Laboratories and he was talking about graphene oxide. I said, why don't you check out, we have a paper recently on that to improve the procedure. He, says, he said, oh, we're already using that procedure. This paper being in the top 20 of the most uh, visited papers, a lot of paper is a big achievement, not only for me, it's going to be a big achievement for the whole group, for all members who works in this project. And this is something that is um, very rewarding if you see that a lot of people pay attention to the work that you are doing and all the effort that you're putting onto has been valuable for the other ones. Uh, moreover, there are numerous applications that people are coming with. The applications of graphene oxide for fuel cells, application of graphene oxides for supercapacitors, and gra application of graphene oxides for making electronic devices. And so with all this increased interest, I think that uh, it's going to turn out to be really quite exciting for many.